The hackers have destroyed the world. They even hacked the GD God himself. <laughs> 2.1 will never release. And now I'm the GD God. No, I won't let you destroy GD anymore. Geometry Dash has a long and storied history of narratives being portrayed in its levels, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. It's a very simple game at its core, after all. If you got a cube, some spikes, and some blocks, go beat the level. How the hell do you tie a story to that? Well, this is certainly one way. If you weren't around when the cube story levels were a huge phenomenon, they may look like parodies, but I'm pretty sure most of them are totally sincere levels. And, you know, they're, um, I guess they're passionate. I find them endearing for what they are, like a little cousin's macaroni art project. They're meant to be hung on a fridge for a week, and then never mentioned again. Because this is kind of cheating, right? You can hardly call it a fully-fledged level when there's no gameplay to speak of. It's not like those auto-levels where the spectacle is your icon flying across the level either. You might as well just make a video instead. Some people have, even. So it should be clear what I'm not talking about. But what I am talking about is so broad and so far-reaching that I'm having a hard time putting it into words. Maybe it's a fool's errand. Maybe this topic is just too big to cover in a single video. No, it, it definitely is. I think I'll just go into some examples to save me the trouble. And maybe I'll make a follow-up to this in the future. First off, Why Me, Why Me, Why Me, Why Me by TMN Gaming. This is a decently popular level. I think a few people have heard of it. Why Me is a level that airs the frustrations of a tortured artist. A creator who has plenty of ideas but never was able to put them to canvas because of dark thoughts plaguing their mind. Setting expectations for yourself and trying to meet other people's expectations. Losing motivation when a level isn't well received. I think it's pretty natural to get caught up in things like that. We're all human, after all. I think the way this level portrays its themes is pretty clever, with how you can just kind of explore and look at all the different ideas. I also think the recurring message of I am going to show you the inside of my mind is a good way to contextualize every part as they come up. Fundamentally, I think this is a well-constructed level, and it looks very pretty, which I think bears mentioning. I have to correct one little misconception, though. TMN, you are not inside my mind. Do all of these thoughts haunt you like they haunt me? Alright, so from one artist to another. No, they don't. They don't bother me at all. This level is interesting because it definitely conveys a message that I used to relate to a lot more than I do now. From my current perspective though, I can't help but feel that most of these are just not the right questions to ask. Does the insignificance of your existence weigh down on you? Now this is what they call begging the question. <laughs> I'm going to debate an art level here. So what this question presumes is that my existence is insignificant. It already has that assumption baked in. And I take issue with that because I don't think my existence is insignificant. Who are you to tell me that I'm insignificant? Come on TMN, don't be so presumptuous. Let me relate this to you with a little story. Cause you know. I'm somewhat of a creator myself. It's not my primary creative outlet, but I do poke my head into the GD editor sometimes, and I've created my fair share of Geometry Nest levels. Once upon a time, I made a level called Apocalypse After Party, and I was very happy with it. I really thought I'd captured lightning in a bottle. I was imagining huge channels showcasing my level, and it getting featured on the front page because of this unique gameplay concept I'd cooked up. Uh, time passed, and none of this happened, of course. And I'll be honest, I wasn't happy about it. It was incredibly demoralizing. What's wrong with me, I thought. And all the while, this level had received the most positive reception of any level I'd created up until that point. But I couldn't appreciate that. On top of that, it was paralyzing to try to live up to the expectations I'd set for myself. I wanted to make it big. I wanted my levels to make an impact, but... It just caused me not to be able to create anything, no matter how much time I spent in the editor. I get the impression that TMN was in the same boat when they made this level. The frustrations are pretty clear to see. It's not at all a healthy state of mind though. It doesn't make you happy to concern yourself with the popularity of your levels this much. It doesn't make you happy to set such high standards for yourself or to try to live up to the standards of others. That being the case, why me says that maybe it's better to not be creative at all. And I think that really sucks. 
It's easy to fall into that attitude, but if you're struggling with this, I think it's important to refocus your priorities. We've probably heard this said a million times, but really, I have to stress this. If you value your creativity, you need to stop worrying about the quality of your art so much. You need to stop thinking about what other people have to say, and in some cases, you even need to stop worrying about what you have to say. You have to create because you find it personally fulfilling because you enjoy the creative process. I find that people make much better art when they internalize that way of thinking. I mean, I certainly did. I'm not gonna tell you that I don't have these feelings anymore. Obviously, I still like it when people praise my levels, and it still feels bad when people criticize them, but I also know it doesn't really matter. So I'm able to put those feelings aside so they don't nod my subconscious. I can emphatically say that I like my levels, I think removed submission is fucking awesome, no matter how much the people that play it criticize it for its gameplay. I think Edge of the Universe is a sweet reimagining of Center of Existence, and I'm very satisfied with it being one of the hardest levels I've ever beaten. As long as I'm personally satisfied, there's nothing else these levels can do for me. I can empathize with Why Me a lot, but I can't relate to it anymore. I just do not like the conclusions it comes to. People can create for whatever reasons they want, of course, but if it's making you unhappy, maybe that's something to think about. It's easy for me to say, since there's a difference between understanding my way of thinking and truly believing in it, and crossing that threshold can be a huge challenge in itself. Still, I think it's worth it to try. It occurs to me that if you wanted to, you could technically argue that every single boss fight level is a story level like a hero's journey type deal. Truly, I was being delusional when I entertained the idea of covering this topic in a single video. I've only managed to talk about one level so far. Okay, so let's move on to White Space. We're taking on all the big names today. This might be a bad idea since White Space is actually a huge can of worms, but uh, when has that ever stopped me? I'll try to be as concise as I can about it. On the surface, White Space is a very beautiful level with stunning visuals and effects. There's a lot of spectacle and grandeur, and it leaves an awe-inspiring impression. It highlights Zender Games' technical skill with the editor, that's for sure. However, as visually impressive as this level is, it feels kind of impenetrable to me. I feel like it's not very effective at conveying what it wants you to take from it. And that's because this level feels confused. It feels confused because there are so many different elements fighting for my attention. For example, there's text all over the level to read, but I can't spare a glance at that when I'm busy playing. I can look here, or I can look here, but I can't do both. What's interesting is that Zender Game has uploaded a video of this level without a visible player, so it's just a level on its own. And I'll be honest, this level works much better as a video. Taking away the need to focus on playing allows you to actually look at all the little details in the level. You can pause the video, re-watch different segments, you can stop and take your time. It suggests that maybe it would have been better to make this an auto level. The gameplay itself doesn't really contribute to the narrative anyway, after all. Not to mention, the gameplay is kind of frustrating because it's so hard to make out what's even happening. I guess what I'm saying is that this level is just too bombastic to tell a nuanced and cohesive story. That's why I have a hard time relating the moral lesson at the end with the rest of the level. Although I do agree that it's a good one to internalize, it just comes out of nowhere. Okay, but now that we have this video, we can tease out the underlying story of this level a lot more easily, right? Well, that's a story for another time. And another person. I'm talking about white space of the level here, not white space the video. Actually, I think this is a pretty important point, especially with respect to Geometry Dash. I get the feeling that in the GD community, a lot of people's first and sometimes only experience of levels is through YouTube videos, causing them to kind of blur together. It creates the illusion that there are two different ways to experience the same thing, but I think that's horribly misguided. There is a gigantic difference between playing the game and watching a video. For starters, when you watch a video, all of the failure leading up to that point is taken out. You're only watching the last couple minutes of what in reality can be an hours, sometimes days or even weeks long struggle. And I think that's significant. Playing White Space soured my opinion of the level a bit because it doesn't feel good. And not in a way that serves the story, it just doesn't feel good to play. It's annoying and it's frustrating. And I don't think that's the feeling Zender Game was going for with respect to the story of the level. The gameplay feels like an afterthought. The other thing, as I already mentioned, playing the level and just watching a video directs your attention to different things, 
which can undercut the story a lot, which white space falls victim to. On the flip side, a good level will take advantage of this difference. It will utilize the gameplay to reinforce its narrative. In falling up, for example, at the end of the first section, you fall up into the next section. In later parts of the level, you fall down invisible stairs as they move up. The wave parts in the level reinforce it even further in time with the music. Just pay attention to the gameplay and you'll notice how well it reflects the theme of the level. Another example that I think is really clever, in Heartbeat, you create the waveform of a heartbeat with your wave. That's fucking genius. And yeah, of course, both of these are Kermal levels. Kermal is just really good at creating gameplay, not only because it's unorthodox, but because it's well thought out and creative. Every jump feels deliberate, and it aids the overall theme of his levels. Gameplay is important. It's ultimately what Geometry Dash is fundamentally about. You can't relegate it as an afterthought, because when you play a level that's like that, it's immediately noticeable. I think White Space fails in that regard. White Space feels like a video first and a level second. No disrespect to Zender game though, I think trying to convey an idea or an emotion through the medium of Geometry Dash levels is one of the most difficult things you can strive to do. There are very few levels in the game that do this effectively. So. What is a level that does this effectively? Well, I'm glad you asked, because I was actually having some trouble figuring out where to go next for this video. Thanks for giving me some direction, it really helps. Lonely Travel. It's kind of insane how well Funny Games levels have aged, considering how ancient they are. Lonely Travel probably isn't the best example of this, but I think it still holds up pretty well. This is like the quintessential narrative-driven level in Geometry Dash. It left such a lasting impact on the community that it created a whole separate category of levels. Even among all of those, Lonely Travel is still special though. Lonely Travel portrays an immense journey across the globe in little snippets. It really gives you the sense that you're going somewhere, and that's for a couple reasons. For one, the level portrays a lot of real-world scenery in its design. From cities to mountains to flying high into the sky, the sights you get to see are varied in both space and time. On top of that, the level is also really long. Lonely Travel is a 6 minute behemoth of a level. 1.5 minutes is typically the standard. I think the length is very important for this level because you can't condense this feeling of endurance as you go further and further into a level that's 4 times as short. Longevity is integral to the experience. You're not taking a walk around the block here, this is an immense journey you're undertaking. I don't have concrete evidence for this, but I get the impression that this is meant to be a lifelong journey. An especially powerful moment is when you near the end of the level. The vast majority of the level is black and white, and it really gives you this old-timey feeling. When you approach the 5 minute mark though, there is a marked tone shift in the level. Hints of color start to appear with these flowers and the rays of light, but then, suddenly, you're greeted with the bright blue sky as the backdrop of your journey. I really love this moment, and I love how from here on the level is in full color. It really signifies the growth you experience as a person. You've traveled all across the globe, and now you're able to view it in a new light. You see a more complete image of it. That's how I view it anyway. It's a subtle form of storytelling, but it's so effective nonetheless. It feels a lot more personal to the player, and it feels raw. It conveys feeling more than it conveys thought. I just think that's really beautiful. Overall, I do appreciate a more atmospheric approach to storytelling in Geometry Dash. Partly because a lot of your attention is going to be swallowed up by just playing the level. It's not like a novel or a movie, or even other narrative-driven games. You only have a couple of minutes to tell your story, and all of that time the player is going to be focused on trying to beat the level, instead of trying to catch any subtle story elements you might throw their way. So let that be today's lesson, I suppose. Keep that in mind when you're building a narrative into your level. And I think that's a good note to end it on. There will undoubtedly be another video like this in the future, so look out for that. And let me know if there are any levels you would like to see me cover. Thanks for watching everybody, and see you next time.